All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about continuity. Continuity. That is a property of functions. A function can be continuous or not. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Continuity of a function. It's a very simple idea, a very intuitive idea, but uh, when you want to talk specifically, like mathematically about it, it gets slightly complicated. Not so bad. Here's, uh, here's the idea. If I have a function that looks sort of like this, this one is continuous. Continuous, the intuitive idea means that when you look at the graph, it's just like one smooth sort of unbroken continuous line, right? Um, as a, so this one is continuous. at all points um, as opposed to something which is not continuous would be something that does like one of these all right that there is not continuous and why is it not continuous it's because of that uh, this the graph is not just sort of one continuous line it's got this break in it and specifically we could say like if this is say at this x value you typically say where um, where is it continuous in terms of the x value. So this one is continuous everywhere except x equals two, right? That point right there is where it's not continuous. You, you typically don't mention the y values because there's actually we don't, we don't, uh, when we describe where is it continuous, it's always in terms of the x value. So this one is continuous everywhere except x equal to. Another word or another uh, way to say that is we can say this one is discontinuous. That's the opposite. Discontinuous at x equal to. Or sometimes they say x equal to is a discontinuity point. Anyway, those are all uh, saying the same thing in a few different ways. All right. This is the intuitive idea of what continuous means. The, uh, but every time I've described this, I'm not really saying a real definition because I said just like the line is like a uh, uh, unbroken continuous line, but you can't use the word continuous if you're trying to make a definition of continuity. Uh, and, you know, saying other synonyms like unbroken is not any better. Like what exactly does it mean when you say continuous or unbroken or whatever. Sometimes people say you can draw the line without lifting your pencil from the paper. Yeah, that's what you mean. But that also is not a real definition. Uh, a real mathematical definition should not involve words like you can draw the line, you know, you without your pencil and the paper, like it, it should have nothing to do with pencils or papers. It should be a real mathematical concept. Anyway, that's what I want to talk about. How do you actually make this definition? It has to do with the points, the values at the points, and limits. Really what you want to say is at every point along this curve, like for instance this point right here, what's important, what makes this unbroken is the fact that as we travel along the curve towards this point, and when we finally arrive at this point, the y values match up. Like the y value at this point is actually the same as the y values that you get along the curve when you get close to that point. As opposed to here, the y value at this point is down here, but it's not the same as the y values along the curve as you get close to this uh, x equals two, right? So that's why this one is discontinuous. The real definition has to do with the value of the function being the same as the value along the curve near the function. That is to say, the limit. Anyway, let's write the real definition of continuity. So here's the definition. Remember, we typically talk about continuity at a specific point. So I'm going to say f of x, the function, is continuous at a specific point. And the point that we're going to talk about, our book usually calls that point a. So f of x is continuous at certain point, x equal a. You should think of a as like, you know, two in that example that we had right here. Um, continuous at x equal a when three things must be true. So I'm going to call them number one. First of all, f of a exists. That is to say, there is actually a y value at that particular point where it is continuous. These are conditions 
that make it continuous. If there was no y value there, there was no y value, then there'd be a hole in the function, which means it's not continuous. So first of all, the y value must actually exist. Condition number two is the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists. The way you should think of this is that if you are traveling along the curve, the curve actually goes somewhere near uh, that point, f uh, x equals a. And number three, is that these two things, they both exist already, they are numbers, they must be equal to each other. So f of a equals lim x goes to a f of x, all right? So what this means is when you look at that particular point, the y value that you get is actually the same as the y value that the curve goes to. And that's what it means to say that the line is unbroken, right? That there is no hole or jump in the function. It means the y value that you see at the point is the same as the y value that the curve goes to. So the curve actually goes to where it's supposed to go. It doesn't have a jump in it. All right, this is the definition of continuity. Can I just point out, uh, uh, let me just for your information, uh, if you're really interested in the mathematics behind this, we have scrubbed over um, some very deep thoughts about the particular definition of this. The true definition of the limit I have been saying this in an informal way about sort of where the curve goes to. Um, the true definition of that, mathematically speaking, is very, very complicated. If you want to learn that, you've got to become a math major and take a course called Real Analysis, which typically math majors take in their junior or senior year. It's pretty complicated. Or look it up somewhere. Um, you will see it's pretty complicated. If you're into that sort of thing, we're not going to get into that in this course. For our purposes, this will be the definition of continuity. Let's do some examples. All right, I just copied the uh, three conditions over there so we can remember them. Let's do an example looking at a picture. How about this graph? Let's try something like this. All right, here is a function. Your job is to say, where is it continuous? Actually, let's just say, where is it discontinuous? Discontinuous, that is, where is it not continuous? And for those points where it's not continuous, say, which, you know, I mean, number one, two, three are violated, right? Violated, I wrote. Which uh, of these three properties are violated, right? If it's not continuous at a certain point, then that means one of these is not true. So say, which one is it that is not true? All right, uh, in this example, so say, let's do this first. Say, where is it discontinuous? Um, look along the curve and do you see any points where it fails to be continuous? That is where there is actually a break in the curve and you do see such a point, it's right here, um, where, uh, like I said, we're always gonna describe this in terms of x value. So where is it discontinuous? I'm gonna say it is discontinuous at x equals one. This is the x value where the break happens. And then let's just look at each of the, uh, each of these three numbers. Now, when I look over here, I'm talking, this A, remember, is the specific point that you're talking about. So in my case, I'm talking about uh, the A is going to be 1. So um, is it true that F of 1 exists? Does F of 1 exist? Look on the picture. Is there actually a Y value when X equals 1? Yes, there is. We have the empty dot and the filled in dot. We choose the filled in dot and its y value is equal to one. So I'm gonna say yes, in particular f of one equals one, all right? So number one is not violated, uh, violated. Number two, is it true that lim, uh, remember a, I'm using one. So lim x goes to one, f of x exists. Does this limit exist? Uh, that means does the curve actually go to a particular value when x is close to one? This limit does not exist. We have the two sides and they have different, they are approaching different y values. So overall, this limit does not exist. All right, so number two is violated. And then number three, 
are these two things equal? One of them is one, the other does not exist. So actually number three is uh, also violated. That's just because uh, one of those things doesn't exist. So I mean, you could say number three doesn't even make sense, but whatever. Uh, the limit part does not exist. So it's not possible for those two things to equal one another. All right, so say where is the discontinuous? Uh, it's discontinuous at x equal one. And then which of them are violated? Number two and number three are violated. And that's how we do it. All right, that's why it is not continuous at that point. This is looking at graphs. Um, let's see if we can do this by looking at equations. Looking at equations. General rule of thumb, when you're looking at equation and you want to know where is it continuous, I'm just going to say for ordinary equations, they are continuous um, everywhere in their domain. Uh, what I mean by ordinary equations is uh, that's kind of informal. Basically, any equation that you're likely to encounter in this class or in your in your mathematical experience. Otherwise, most equations that you can write down are automatically continuous at all points in their domain. Probably the only exception to that that you've ever heard of might be the tangent. If you know some uh, some trigonometry, the tangent is not discontinuous uh, on all all of its domain points. But um, probably everything else uh, is is continuous. Uh, everywhere in its domain, every other function you've ever heard of. So when you're looking at an equation, really what you should focus on is the domain. And so I'll say looking for All right, so if you are looking for discontinuities, that would be places where it is not continuous. Well, I said they are continuous everywhere in the domain. So really what you should be looking for is points which are not even in the domain. That is, look for points which make the function undefined. And the hallmark of such points, at least for our purposes in this class, is you should be looking for points which um, cause a zero in the denominator. You could also look for negative numbers inside of a square root, although that's going to happen much less often for our purposes than zeros in the denominator. This is really the big one. So if you are looking for discontinuity points, you should check to see when you can get zeros in the denominator. And those points will be discontinuity points of the function. Let's try some examples. All right, I just wanna try one of these. This function here, your job is find any discontinuities. And for each one, this is a little confusing the question, but actually you're gonna see some, some uh, homework problems like this, so I figured we should do it this way, so you're not confused at that point. Find any discontinuities, and then for each one, find lim x goes to a of f of x, all right? So a discontinuity would be one where the value, the function is just not defined at all, or for some reason, the value of the limit is different from the value of the function. So uh, I would like you to find the discontinuity points and then for each one, find what the limit is when you approach that point. All right, how do we find discontinuities? First of all, um, we are going to look for zero in the denominator, right? That was my suggestion before. Um, what numbers make the denominator equal to zero? Now you could look at this denominator and just try to guess what numbers will make that equal zero? If you're a good guesser, you might guess uh, x equal two because two squared is four and then you go, you'd have four minus two minus two, which is zero. Actually, that, that is a value where the denominator equals zero. Although I'm not really into guessing as a method for finding. How would you actually figure out when does that equal zero? Well, you would just set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x, right? How do we solve this for x? You factor on this side, or you could use a quadratic formula, I suppose. I'm not really, uh, I'm not really into that. Um, you factor on this side. We gonna get like this, right? 
uh, I believe it should be x minus 2 and x plus 1 equals 0, right? And now solve this for x. You set each one equal to 0, like you always do. x equal 2, that was the one I guessed before. And then also x equal minus 1. If you put minus 1 in there, you're also going to get zero in the denominator. Okay, so these are our discontinuity points. Uh, your first task was find any discontinuity. So I'm going to say discontinuous at x equal 2 and x equal minus 1. That's a 2 right there. Mm. All right. Discontinuous at x equals 2 and x equal minus 1. Your second job, for each one of those, find the limit as x approaches a, where this a is just like one of those. So we're going to do two separate times this limit, right? The first time we're going to find the limit as x goes to 2, and then the second time we're going to find the limit as x goes to minus 1. i got to erase this. 2 and minus 1. So our first point of discontinuity is... I'll do two first. I'll call it A here. You can call it X still if you want to. Um, for this one, I need to do lim X goes to two of F of X, right? Of course, F of X is that function. So this is lim, lim X goes to two of X squared plus X minus six over X squared minus X minus two. All right, how do you do this? This is like what we did uh, two times ago. Um, I should begin by just trying to plug this number in. Now, if I plug x equal 2 into this formula, the bottom will be 0. That's because we already determined 2 will make the bottom 0. What do you get on the top? You get 2 squared, which is 4, plus another 2, which is 6, minus 6. Actually, if you plug this in, you're going to get 0 over 0, right, if you plug 2 in. Uh, so that means we must simplify first and then try to plug in again. How do you simplify this? you got to factor. So uh, this becomes, I'm not doing the limit yet. I still put that there. Factor on the top and on the bottom. Now we already factored the bottom uh, before. It was x minus 2 and x plus 1. How about factor the top? All y'all factoring masters out there. Uh, I think it should be plus 3 and minus 2. x plus 3, x minus 2. I hope you agree. Can we simplify this? Yes, we can. We can cancel x minus 2s. This becomes lim x goes to 2, x plus 3 over x plus 1. We plug in now. Hopefully everything will be fine. 2 plus 3 over 2 plus 1. This is 5 over 3. And that right there is the answer. All right. So the limit, uh, this limit is 5 thirds. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do the other one. We were supposed to do this for all of the discontinuity points. This was the a equal 2. The other one was negative 1. Let's try that. All right, I'll go lim. x goes to minus 1. x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared minus x minus 2. All right, as before, we should begin by trying to plug this value in. What do we get? Um, on the bottom, we get 0 uh, because, again, the whole point of this number was this number was chosen because it makes the bottom 0. What about on top? Uh, if I do minus 1 squared gives me plus 1. I'll just write this down. Minus 1 squared plus minus 1 minus 6. Make sure you get all your signs proper. This is 1. This is minus 1 minus 6 over 0, which is... Oh, that's negative 6 over 0. What is that, uh, your interpretation of that? If you get, remember, if you get 0 over 0, it means you've got to go back and factor or whatever. What if you get minus 6 over there? Actually, this means we're done. This means the limit does not exist. If you get something which is not a cons uh, not 0 on top divided by 0 on the bottom, the limit does not exist. All right, that's how we do it.